Today, I'll be speaking with Prof G about smouldering MS. Um, so the existing DMTs, do they treat smouldering MS effectively? No, we don't think so because we know by having people on DMTs and suppressing relapses and folk and these new lesions from occurring, a significant proportion still get worse. Mm. Uh, and most of these therapies don't get into the brain and to target the, the processes that we think are driving small ring MS. This is why we've got this next generation of treatments, mm. uh, CNS penetrant drugs, that actually target this pathology. So I'm hoping the next generation of therapies are going to be either dual mode of action, some of them will work in the periphery and centrally, or we'll be developing combinations, so new, uh, new, new types of treatment strategies where we use two or three drugs in combination. Mm. But we need to get drugs into the central nervous system, okay, and, th and that's, the, that's the next challenge there, Ness. Mm. So what stage are these new drugs at at the moment? Well, one class, it's called BTK, it stands for Brutine Tyrosine Kinase. It's, it's an enzyme that exists inside B cells and, and these microglia. Okay. These uh, drugs are in late stage development. They're in phase, what we call phase three. If those trials are positive, then the drug gets mm. licensed, then we get used in MS. Okay. So we're expecting potentially those drugs to be available in the next 18 to 24 months. So it's quite soon. Mm. Well, maybe 18, 24 months is not soon enough in, mm. in people's multiple sclerosis life. But it, for me, as an academic working in the field, you know, we're expecting these drugs to be available in the next two to five years. Because mm. it sounds pretty positive. So I was just wondering, why are some, uh, I guess, some people in your field not too keen on this concept of smouldering MS? In general, neurologists are a skeptic bunch. They, you know, um, and also this concept of smouldering MS is a bit of an uncomfortable for them. Mm. simply because we don't have drug treatments for it right now. Okay. When, when it's brought up in a clinic environment, it means extra work for them. You know, they've mm. got to explain it. So that's why I, I, I do social media. Okay. I, I create online content mm. uh, for people like you to read to understand this process. So anything that requires extra work in clinic uh, is slowly adopted. And mm. that's, my, that's my skeptical uh, opinion about it. Okay. But once we've got treatments for it, there'll be a different story. The neurologist will say, goodness me, we've got effective therapies for this. Yeah. Uh, let's identify if you've got small ring MS because you may be eligible for these treatments. So you'll see once the treatment becomes available, I'm almost certain healthcare professionals and neurologists will be very quick to adopt mm. uh, this concept and use the new therapies for it. Mm. Do you think cost is a factor in terms of it coming into the NHS as a mm. treatment? Mm -hmm. I think the pharmaceutical companies and the NHS know that these drugs have to be cost effective for, for us to use them. And once you clear that and we get approval, then we use them. Other parts of the world, particularly middle and low income countries, mm where there are no NHSs and no NICE, I think that's a different, that's a different uh, uh, issue. Mm -hmm. But in the UK, once the drugs are approved, we do use them. If I wanted to know more about smouldering MS, how would I go about talking to my medical team about it? First of all, you need to ask your MS team, uh, are my MRI scans free of activity? In other words, have I got no new lesions? I think once you clear that hurdle, you can gently ask, do I have any evidence of smouldering MS? You know, is my brain volume normal? Do I have slowly expanding lesions? They'll probably say we don't measure brain volume, we don't measure slowly expanding lesions because actually it's not measured in routine clinical practice. But then obviously if you're an MS patient and you notice you're getting worse despite mm. not having any new lesions, then you've got to ask the question is why am I getting worse? And they need to uh, tell you because there are other reasons why people get worse as well. It's not just small ring MS. Mm. There are other potential reasons why. So you need to ask that question. You may have some uncomfortable conversations with your healthcare professional. They may not want to talk about it. I just come back from a conference where one of the MS nurses said to me, this is just creating more work uh, uh, for me. I don't, I don't want to discuss this because it's another thing for me to do. And I think that's putting your head in the sand. If this is what MS is about, we have to get up to speed with it and we have to discuss it. And the science is telling us very clearly that uh, smoldering MS is a problem and we mm. need to address it. And so the quicker we do that, the better for people the disease. There's a lot of people in the field discussing this. Uh, another term that neurologists will be comfortable with is called PIRA, progression independent or relapse activity. Okay. That's another term that's in the medical literature. Mm. But it doesn't, it's, it's, it's a difficult one to get around. And, and some of the social media activities I've done, um, I think people, people prefer the term smoldering. That's why we've adopted this term smoldering. If you found that interesting and you'd like to learn more, make sure you check out Gavin's newsletter. And we've left a link to it in the description of this video. 
Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so we can bring you more of these videos.